Hello, this is John from Vidgamium. I know you've never heard my voice before, but here it is. And welcome to my first Let's Play, Sid Meier's Civilization Revolution. A nifty little in expansion of the Civilization series. Uh, I'm playing this on the PS3. Well, not so much playing it right now. I was playing it on the PS3. What had happened was that I originally recorded this with Mitchell, the other, uh, my co-commentator. On Vidgamium and well the audio pretty much got lost in recording it was just so scratchy you couldn't hear either one of us so I decided to just go back watch this laugh at myself <laughs> at whatever I did in this game and try my best to give you the entertainment value of two voices which probably will fail but oh well and so we had decided to play this game, well, number one, because it was a pretty, it's a pretty quick game. It's almost, there is no, it's not story intensive or anything like that per se. If I had to compare it to something, it would be like a board game. You pull out the board game and you start just a whole new mini story and just play through till you get the victor at the end. It's pretty simple. And still, you can get a lot of enjoyment out of it, just like a board game. And uh, another reason was that uh, we have another Let's Player, the Madman, who did inspire us in part to play this, as I will link to his channel somewhere on here. Future Telf, just edit in a link somewhere on the screen. And so here we're just looking at the five difficulties, Chieftain, Warlord, King, Emperor, and Deity. Anything that's highlighted in gold is my awesome victory medal in whatever that is. We decided to go with Warlord, which is like the second easiest one because we didn't want like incredibly difficult playthrough because, well, let's face it, we're not that good yet. And so I'm just scrolling through here. You have a whole bunch of different leaders from all sorts of different times, like Gandhi here, who loves to declare war on me in every single just adventure that I've had in this game. I know, right? And just... Shaka... Liz, Queen Elizabeth Kings Khan. Don't ask how these people got to know each other. I don't know. Well, you can see here there's just... A lot of interesting little notes to choose. Uh, it's not just preference of your country. It also, every single person on here comes with their own... Sort of benefits, as you can see in that description box. The... On the left side of that description, you see their bonuses that they get for each different age that you enter. As the ancient age is your beginning one, so Romans get like half price roads. Because all roads lead to Rome, of course. And, you know, as you go into medieval, industrial, and then modern age, they have different things. And then off to the right there, there you get a unique little bonus, like trying to begin game of writing of. Or knowledge of writing. Ah. Writing of knowledge. And then there's special units, which, I mean, I don't really see much the point of special units besides the fact that they just rename a unit that already exists in the game. Like the Sherman tank. It's the same thing as a tank, it's just named the Sherman tank instead. And so we have good old Lincoln here who we decide to go with, and yes, game decides to give you tips at wherever you're going. Just interesting little things, like, yeah, first civilization to get the irrigation is possible. Here's our nifty our intro, which I will let this man talk for a while. And have settled in a city. They look to you to guide them into the uncertain future. My liege, I believe that if we wish to survive, we must make our city strong and prosperous. And once we have grown, we must send settlers to build even more cities across the land. Cities are indeed the most powerful of all human creations. For it is only within cities that we can create the mighty armies needed to defend ourselves and to bring defeat to our foes. My liege, our fate is in your hands. Will we be a warlike people, striking fear into the hearts of other nations? Will we be peaceful and cultured, an advanced nation of philosophers and artists? 
Or will our wise men and scientists chart a course that will bring us into a glorious future of astounding science and unimagined technology? What will the future hold for us? Will we be yet another forgotten people, a mere footnote in the annals of history? Or will you prove to be the greatest ruler the world has ever known and build for us a civilization for the ages? A civilization to stand the test of time. My liege, our people await your orders. And now we're back. That was a beautiful intro, wasn't it? Now, the whole stand the test of time thing has basically been the classic line since the beginning of civilization. And it certainly stands to reason since we're starting out 4000 BC. Yeah, America wasn't founded in 4000 BC, don't use that as a history lesson. And you see here, we have settlers, so uh, unless you begin the game as a chieftain, which starts you as a city, you begin with settlers, and the basic idea is that you want to choose a place to settle a city, depending on what you have here. You have these little resource, every square is a resource, and you just use these little circles to de determine what they are. Like, the blue is a production square. Uh, the green is food, hence the apple. The red, as in like the sea or occasionally desert squares, those you can't access them unless you have the right technology. And what they do is they you can either choose to let them be science growth or economic growth, whatever way you want to go in this. Now, I just sort of look around here and realize I'm also on a hill. Having your city on a hill gives you a nice advantage in combat, should it get down to that. And the mountain, well, y units can't go on a mountain unless they happen to be like a fighter plane or something like that. And so I'm looking around, I'm pretty sure I settle right here. And make, yep, there we go, Washington. Beautiful city of Washington, this is exactly what it looks like. And here's our great person, um, Tipu Sultan. I don't know who that is. Does it have anything to do with the word Sultan? I don't know. Person! Future self! Insert interesting text box that tells us who this person is. I'm going to be doing that throughout this entire Let's Play for whoever we run into and we have no idea who it is. Which is pretty much everyone. I mean, there's a few people I had some ideas about, but... Eh. It'll be better to just post-edit it. Because, let's face it, I can't recall stuff off the top of my head at, like, whatever time of night this is. And there we go. Yep. There I am. John. Despotism. Beautiful despotism in America. Now watch the years roll by. Yes, it took us 500 years to breed the perfect warrior. Well, no, they're not the perfect warrior. They're just, they're actually really basic units. Now, the galley is just a really, also the most basic ship in the game, which is good for early on exploration, but it can't go deep sea, so that's a thing. So right now, we just have our warriors just exploring, and, well, yeah, there you go. Good job. Running straight into a peninsula. Can't do anything. At least we know that there's some land right there. That makes for some interesting exploration later. Um, but for that, that's basically what you want to do with your warriors at the beginning of the game is probably explore because you want to figure out resources like that. That's a good reason to leave. Um, that is a friendly barbarian village. Not, I don't know if I'll call them barbarians, but a friendly village. And what they will do, they give you all sorts of different types of things. Now this is our science screen. Um, when you have a science development, you can choose technologies to research. It gives you how many turns it takes to actually get that research done. Um, different ones obviously go different paths. Like if you want to go warlike, you could go bronze working. But well, even if you weren't going warlike, you would probably get bronze. But you get the point. Like if you want to go for a military victory, you get your military technology. You can also do like alphabet, uh, which is scientific you'll get library which is a good 
way of upping your science production in any city. Um, there's horseback riding, which will give you some, which is also sort of military, but it's also good for explo exploration because, well, horseback riders can move much faster than warriors can. Pottery is, you can almost consider that like a uh, defensive and a cultural sort of thing. Um, because pottery does lead to like ceremonial burial and such. And it also leads into masonry. It's always a good thing. And as it is here, we are just... I'm pretty sure Mitchell and I were just debating about where to go on this gameplay. And I think what we'll you, we do what we usually do is go for science first. Because let's face it, we're men of science. I'm sure you would have figured that out by the fact that we named our channel after a made-up element. You know, Vidgamium. Atomic number 151. Yeah, that's a that's a pretty that, that's a pretty far out there element. Don't ask how we discovered this, okay? But hey, it's ours. We called it. Okay, and <laughs> I am really I'm just really taking my time here with this, aren't I? And eh. Come on, past self. Speed it up a little. We're pouring the audience. Uh, hmm. Well, I mean, what else can I really say? It's science. But, um, hmm. Pass in, hurry up. Yes, you could harvest fish with bronze working. I guess that makes sense, spears and such, but I mean, I don't need a spear to catch fish. I just need, like, my hands. And maybe a worm. I could fa and I can catch worms with my hands. I don't see why you need bronze working for that. Oh, there you go. Finally made your choice. And the warriors take a hundred years to walk a small distance like that. And up oh, there we go. We have found Brynos the Mighty of the Barbarians. We, while we admire your shiny swords and monochromatic tunic, that's quite a large word for a uh, barbarian, good sir. Monochromatic. Yes, I'm sure your happiness requires nothing but a spiky club. That I find that kind of weird. If you think about it that way. Yeah, okay. Awkward science, over. Oh, look, it's Nortikiko of the Barbarians. Yeah, you and your little... No, no I will not feel the sting of your pointy blowguns because your blowguns are not pointy to Dark Tar. Okay, good sir. Stand down. And, well, these are the hostile Barbarians. So, these little buddies are basically... Well... Their early training father for all of your early on units, so destroy them. Well, wow. that battle went pretty off. Skelter killed two of my two of my warriors there. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna have to heal those units later. But um, the thing is that once defeating them, they usually give you some pretty nice prize in return. Um, maybe it's that, uh, gold, or... I don't think they can give you a technology. Maybe give, give you a gold, or a unit, like a horseman or something. Uh, if you're Genghis Khan, you'll actually get, um, settlers, or city, out of it, so... Hey, jeez. My warrior units are getting wrecked out here. Oh, and there you go, he took it. And we got 40 gold pieces, and a hill. Beautiful. Now, good sir, uh, you're not fighting yourself. But in any case, uh, this is always a good thing because not only does it get rewards in general, but there are also the fact that for every time you win in combat, you, your units actually get sort of exp. Oh crap! There goes that warrior's unit. <laughs> Good job. 
past self totally balls it. Our economy is booming. Gold reserves are over a hundred. As a result, settlers Where units appeared. And set with the settlers we can build another city. Now that's economic growth will give you bonuses ever like every so many amounts of gold. Which I find very helpful because I tend not to use gold. Like, not until, like, late game. So, I usually just sort of rake in the economic benefits all the time. And it's pretty nice. I mean, when you have it going for you, you might as well, right? And so, I guess I'm just right here. I'm sort of debating about where to, where to put settlers because um, you want to space out your cities a good bit. But you also want to have them make use of the resources at hand. Um, for example, you've got the, oh jeez, there's, uh, mm, well, I mean, there's, it really all depends on how you want to go about this, like, if you want a more strategic type location for war, you would place it, like, against a river, especially, like, right here, they have a plot of land surrounded on three sides by rivers, which makes a great defense. Oh, and here we go. This is nice. It's a caravan. And caravans are always good for... If you're going for an economic thing, because they can give you money. Now, the cities you run your caravans to, uh, they have to be other countries, and they will tax it so that they get some profit out of it. It's a mutual relationship. But, I mean, personally, I find the caravans aren't as effective as you would want them to be. Just... <laughs> Usually, by the time they actually get fairly effective, you've already got uh, you've already got cities making a lot of money. Now he just mouthed the Chinese. We found China! Yay! Hmm. Uh, offer yes. Every time you first encounter someone, they'll pretty much offer you peace. So, well, well, since we're America, we'll probably want to make peace with the Chinese. I mean, they make like half of our stuff. I'm actually pretty serious about that. But, uh... <laughs> so here's Mao with his fancy book, and... I, I don't know what the book's for. Is that something he was known for? I don't think so. But, um, with... Uh, but it's interesting. If you, um, really want to get political with it in this game, you can. You can, um, actually, like... You know, every turn you can speak with these leaders and you can do things such as buy technology, sell them your technology. You can choose to be like, hey, um, I'm at war with these guys. And, you know, why don't you help me out here? Attack them as well. I see you're at war with them too. And <laughs> Facebook. Yes. Mao can just pull off... This Facebook log was it. We have peace. Now, at peace, there are only two units that can go into enemy territory when they're at peace. And their enemy territory is highlighted by their color squares. And those are spies and caravans. I don't have spies right now until I get writing. But the caravan just decided to go off and trade that, which probably... I don't know if that was my best idea, because I could have used a three-turn... Because caravans move three spaces per turn, which is really nice for the fact that it's, uh, oh, here we go, our first city. Now, sublime city of New Orleans, built <laughs> near the river, how fitting. I don't remember New Orleans being literally next to China. Although, now, what we'll probably do is just name this an original name. I, I think that's what we do in pretty much every gameplay. Unless we get really lazy with it, and we just want to like do a speed run. What are you going to name this? I forgot. Hmm. Twelve dollar. The twelve dollar city. Hmm. Debate for a while. Debating, debating. I can't. <laughs> Having to rewatch this is a bit awkward when recording, especially since it's the first time you're hearing me commentate on something, because I 
don't know what I'm. I don't know what I'm about to do. I don't remember what I did. <laughs> well, for the most part, uh, what is he gonna call this? 